Hello there my very good friends, on today's wrestling news we will discuss all the latest Ring of Honor news as the promotion swings into a crisis. The former Bray Wyatt teases a return to wrestling as his 90 day non-compete is almost up. We're going to give you the updated AEW full gear card after last night's episode of Dynamite. And former WWE announcer Greg Hamilton breaks his silence following his release. I'm Adam Wilborn. And just we Bobby Fish. And this is the news. All right, we're going to kick things off by talking about the ROH situation, which broke last night. It was kind of like this snowballing story, wasn't it? We were in the pub, and one part of it came through, and then another, and another, and another, and it, none of it's good. None no. of it's good, of course. So this whole all began last night when Ring of Honor posted a statement to their Twitter page, basically announcing that, um, you know, through the pandemic, they hadn't let anyone go. They'd retained all the wrestlers and everything else. They kept everyone employed, not wanting to let people go during a international crisis um but their current year is going to conclude at final battle that's on the 11th of december and after that they will be going on a hiatus uh, in order to work internally to reimagine ring of honor they want to reconceptualize the promotion in their own words uh they want to return to live events in april super card of honor pay-per-view is uh listed here as a potential target for that um so yeah, a promotion going on ice for like four months. It's not a good start, right? But it gets worse. Uh, Dave Meltzer reported shortly after this, the Ring of Honor had released all wrestlers under contract. So there are more wrinkles to go through here. PW Insider's Mike Johnson reported that the decision to kind of shutter Ring of Honor uh, was made about a week ago. Elsewhere, Fightful Sean Ross Sapp has said that Ring of Honor COO Joe Kopp had fought hard for the promotion, but Sinclair Broadcast Group, who own Ring of Honor, made the decision. Now, as far as the wrestlers go and their contracts and everything else, this is obviously quite a complicated situation. Um, Brian Alvarez, Wrestling Observer, Figure 4 Online, added that contracts weren't being renewed at the end of the year. Uh, and the Ring of Honor wrestlers, however, are free to work elsewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, in effective immediately, they have to like sort it out internally with the company and everything else. They have to work until the rest of the year. They've got television tapings in November. They've got Final Battle in December. Uh, Sean Ross Sapp has added that people with contracts beyond this year who maybe go past December mm -hmm. or whatever, will be paid until the 31st of March. So an extra three months on top of uh, the end of the year. Uh, Ring of Honor World Champion Bandido, he's already been confirmed for some Game Changer wrestling mm -hmm. shows. Uh, and yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the basis of it. Now, these, these statements don't read well, no. of course. And it's a sad situation because ultimately, in the end of the day, if Ring of Honor was to go away for a more prolonged period of time, it's one less place for people to work. Um, I think that they're going to have a hard time getting things going again, aren't they, yes. in April? If you're releasing your roster and, and they're free to go elsewhere, it's a very talented group of people. Your Jay Lethals, your Jonathan Greshams, your Bandidos, your Briscoes, your Roxies. There's a whole lot uh, of people who I'm sure AEW, WWE, New Japan, mm. Impact, MLW would love to snap up. So it's not a good situation across the board. It's just bad. Yeah. It's just bad. Yeah, I mean, it's awful to, to hear this. The news broke, like you say, last night, and it sort of rocked us as we were sat there. Mm. I mean, a nice post-quiz day celebration. Um, it's weird as well, because like you say, I'm sure we'll have had Twitter questions before, fantasy booking some of the stars of Ring yeah. of Honor in these other promotions. So potentially, it is exciting. You already said you'd love sure. to see, you know, Jonathan Gresham, for example, Gresham in please. AEW. I'm a huge Joe Hendry fan. He's a friend of ours as well, and we want to see him do well. And I think he's got a very exciting future ahead of him. He's already done a tiny bit of stuff with WWE, being like a Russian guy, yeah. if I remember <laughs> rightly. Russian but lawyer, I think I think he's, yeah. you know, we've seen what he can do across the board with WCPW uh, back in the day. And, and I thought he was doing some great stuff in Ring of Honor as well. So fingers crossed for him and all those names you mentioned uh, that they do find another place of work. That thing that you mentioned though, about them saying, we're just gonna take a hiatus. This isn't the end. It may well be the death now, I'm afraid, for Ring of yeah. Honor, just because, like you say, it's all well and good saying we're going to take a break and we're going to re you know, re reimagine things or whatever it may be. Some of these guys just can't afford to wait around, and the moment that their contracts expire, some people, you know, they won't have to reach out to the AEWs, yeah. the you know, impacts or whatever it may be of this world, because. They are incredibly talented guys. Look how quickly Bandido has been signed up for a, a few dates for yeah, GCW, for example. I'm just concerned that when they do decide to come back in April, 
who's going to make up the ROH roster. Yeah, 100%. And they, look, they've had a hard couple of years with the pandemic and everything else, and they've lost money, obviously, and they lost all any semblance of buzz and hype that they once had. You were there at the big supercar yeah, thing, weren't you? Yeah, supercar of honor. Yeah, pretty much since then, it's kind of been a, a, a kind of just this declining buzz levels and everything else. But, I mean, obviously, Ring of Honor was at its most influential in, like, the mid-2000s when you had your Daniel Sins, your CM Punk, your Samoa Joe. All these guys launching their careers with, I would call it, the most influential indie of all time. Yep. Um, it stopped being an indie in 2011 when they were bought by Sinclair, which is a massive corporation. But, yeah, it, it's just... Sad day yeah. in general, and uh, just hope that any wrestlers cast to drift by this get work because it's a very talented crew. Yeah, just a reminder, as we often say with these sorts of things, go out and do what you can to support your favorite wrestler. If it, even it just be show them some support on Twitter, go and buy their merch, whatever it may be. These guys are struggling now as a result of all this, and uh, it's best for, for you guys to just help them because they deserve it for yep. putting their bodies on the line for us. Uh, right, let's move on and talk about the former Bray Wyatt. He was on Twitter in, Twitter in the early hours of this morning, I suppose our time, maybe late last night, US time, tweeting a very intriguing little teaser from Wyndham Rotunda. He tweeted two more days, quite clearly a reference to the fact that his non-compete is running out at the end of this month. Uh, he was released, of course, on the 31st of July. 90 days later, if you're doing the maths, means Friday. Friday the 29th of October Tomorrow. is when his non-compete expires. He can negotiate with, appear for any promotion that he fancies. A lot of speculation uh, about him going to Impact Wrestling. He is a, a hot commodity though, isn't he? Yeah, Tony Khan expressed an interest in talking to him as well. So legally, he'll be able to do these things from, I presume, after tomorrow or on tomorrow. Whatever, whatever. Mm. Soon is the key part of all of this. I'm sure that... Wherever he goes, he's going to bring a legion of supporters because the people who love Bray Wyatt really love Bray Wyatt. They're going to follow him wherever he goes. I still think that he'd be a great benefit to Impact's business yeah. in particular. Um, but yeah, we'll see what happens with the guy. Let us know in the comments where you'd like to see Wyndham Rotunda show up next. I think he should form his own promotion, Swamp Fight Wrestling. <laughs> A good idea. Firefly Funhouse was good. That maybe was good. he'll pop up in AEW. And if you like AEW, Andy Murray, and maybe you want to read Ooh. about how AEW got going, is there any way you can maybe go and pre-order a book from? You can go to Wikipedia. <laughs> and Tony Khan. Joking, of course. We've got a bunch of books coming your way. A brand new one from Michael Sidgwick who's authored Becoming All Elite, The Rise of AEW. It's right there on our web store right now, whatculture.bigcartel.com. You can pre-order it now, international shipping available. Get it in time for Christmas. It is a tremendous yeah. tome from who I consider the preeminent independent expert on All Elite Wrestling. On top of that, we've got Michael's other book that mm -hmm. he released a few years ago, a reprinted Development Hell. The NXT story. So if you want a bit of NXT flavor, there you go. And also, we have added 101 matches to our 505 wrestling matches you need to see before you die. That's another... It takes up to 606. I cannot do mathematics. <laughs> That's up there as well. Revised edition. You can grab that too. It's a pre-order as well. Uh, yeah, if you like words on paper, mm -hmm. you will be a big fan of these particular words on paper because they're good. I'm incredibly biased, but this is a fantastic book by Sage and the, the 5 and 5, now 606 wrestling matches uh, written by a whole host of what culture writers is great as well. Uh, as is the bundle you can get, the Sidgwick bundle, as I'm calling it. You can get the there Development Hell book and the AEW book all as one. Go and pre-order it now. It'll get to you well in time for Christmas. Perfect gift for a friend, family member, or as I keep saying, for yourself, treat yourself. There you go. We got a couple more stories here. We're probably going to have to race through these because yeah. we've rambled a lot. Uh, that's what we do. That's why you tune in. Hey. What do you want us to do? You just read an article and not do weird faces you and stuff? It. That's what you pay for. You don't pay anything. <laughs> what am I talking about? Updated full gear card last night. Three new matches added uh, for the pay-per-view, which goes down on the 13th of November. Saturday night, get in. Oh, come on. Uh, those new matches are FTR challenging for the Lucha Brothers AEW tag team titles. They've already taken the AAA tag team titles mm -hmm. from them. And what, were, what was their name again? The, the Super Frogs. Super Frogs, yeah. Super Frogs. Super good, cool. Uh <laughs> Alex Abrahantes is going to hit Tully Blanchard with a Canadian destroyer on that show. Fair play. Listen, listen, Bad Bunny did one at WrestleMania. Alex Abrahantes 
Please don't kill him. Just do don't that. kill him, please. Yeah, you know, these, these people who aren't wrestlers coming in and doing Canadian Destroyers rules. Why not? Uh, MGF, Darby Allen, that's happening. They had a big confrontation last night. Not going to do the play by play. That's why you listen to the podcast, human beings. Uh, the Inner Circle, meanwhile, will face the men of the year and three members of American Top Team to be determined next week in a Minneapolis street fight. So that'll be interesting. They join Kenny Omega versus Hangman Page for the world title, Britt Baker versus Ty Conti for the women's world title. Title. And of course, uh, what on earth is the other match? The world title yeah. eliminator final, which is going to be John Moxley or Orange Cassidy versus Edward Kingston or Brian Danielson. It's going to be Brian Danielson versus John yeah, Moxley, yeah. basically. Yeah. You can probably guess that. But <laughs> nevertheless, it's going to be a hell of a journey on the road to that. And it's going to be intriguing to see which members of American top team that they pick. Obviously, you'd assume people like Junior Dos Santos maybe getting picked. Jorge Masvidal, you got Andre Arlovsky, also a member of American Top Team, was looking at their website today. Bobby Lashley. So <laughs> interesting if they select that one. Uh, right, let's conclude by talking about uh, former WWE announcer Greg Hamilton. We revealed the other day that he had been released, of course, and he has broken his silence on Instagram talking all about this. Uh, he's been with the WWE for six years and he posted, I'm going to give you a, a sort of cliff notes of what he posted on his Instagram saying, after six years and 52 weeks a year, it's time to say goodbye. First and foremost, don't let the internet or social media gas you up. This was a mutual respect departure from a great company. Nothing but respect from both sides. It's business. Uh, he continues, as I get older, my mother is in her 70s. My sister Jessie, who has cerebral palsy. Uh, those are my priorities. Not chasing fame, not being on TV. 52 weeks a year became too much without our mental health we have nothing but man what a ride there are truly no fans like the wwe universe i am forever grateful and for one last time one fall i don't work then anymore so you're allowed to say it now put a load of hashtags on there just a lovely farewell yeah. and taking uh, his priorities seriously i thought that was a lovely thing to, to know as well yeah absolutely good to good to hear from greg after the departure mm -hmm. of course um, all the best to him and his changing priorities. Nothing yeah. but respect for that. Yeah, look, if you need to look after family members, if you just need to look after yourself for your mental health, he's nailed it there. Absolutely, that should be your first priority. So best to look to him and hopefully we'll see him announcing again once he is ready. Right, let's move on to your Twitter questions. Actually, before we do that, hey. I always forget to do this. Don't forget you can order your Survivor Beeries from our friends at Top Rope Brewing. We've got a Survivor Beeries selection, 12 craft beers, £45, all in, free delivery with the code, here's why. Unfortunately, again, only for our viewers here in the UK, but the link is in the description. 45 quid, absolute bargain, delicious craft beers, celebrating five years of Top Rope Brewing and Survivor Series. It's Top Rope versus What Culture, six on six beers, basically. Uh, you can go and get them now. They are absolutely fantastic. As I said, link in the description and they will get to you well in time for Survivor Series. Right, let's move on to your Twitter questions. At what culture WWE? of course, you want to get in touch with us. Uh, first question today comes from Jake King, who says, with Retro Raw announced, would you have a female legend like Beth Phoenix or Lita, or maybe a group of them come out, only to all get beaten down by an up-and-comer? And if so, who? I know it's booking ahead for WWE, but someone has to Right, we always say this with retro yeah. shows. There's so much potential for getting people over, and half the time what happens is they just get mugged off by yeah. legends, don't they? Yeah, they get beaten up by Randy Orton or insulted or whatever backstage. Yeah, I think, like, especially if you use someone like Beth or Lita, who could theoretically still have another match, you'd yeah. imagine. I think that's a good idea, because then you could set that up for, like, WrestleMania or whatever, and you have the heat from the angle, and you could have a fun, like, attraction match with this legend from the past and someone of the new era. That's always been, for me, the best way to use like legends and, mm -hmm. and stuff so yeah let's do it i just I look at these things and i go oh, who'd look really good killing a legend and it's always Shayna baszler i yeah. don't know why <laughs> they don't it's so simple they come out Shayna pretends to be all nice we all know she's a sinister bastard and she goes oh well, well i'll leave you well all right thanks thanks yeah. for coming nice out so nice to you. Some of that and chokes <laughs> them out because she needs to be world chat I'm, I'm not giving up on this i'm not ready to give it up all right Cool. Still, you're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> anyway, You'll second, get there one day. Yeah, one day. Uh, <laughs> right, second question comes from Alex Bruegel. Bruegel, I like that. Sorry what I've done to your surname there, Alex. Uh, personal bias aside, Alex says, who are some wrestlers you could see being on the Mount Rushmore of wrestling in the future? Ooh, oh, this is a really good question. Mm -hmm. uh, wow, it's really tough, isn't it? Because certain 
you know, the developmental in WWE is so like embryonic at the moment that it's hard to predict certain people going so far. Bron Breaker already looks Bron like Breaker. he's chiseled ass. stone. Yeah. Guy's had four matches and he's already headlining like <laughs> NXT. But let's put Bron, Bron Breaker on there. Okay. Why not? I'll put Anna Jay on there. I think she's got all the potential in the world. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. We were actually, I'll mention a name. I'm going to cheat and just steal something you guys were talking about in the office earlier. Serena Deeb. Serena Deeb is one of the most talented female wrestlers in the world. Yet yeah, another brilliant showcase for her on Dynamite. And I know he said put personal players to one side. And even if I do that, I'm going to have to say my best friend. Titus O'Neil. No, not quite. Oh. <laughs> he could be a great tour guide to show you around the Mount Rushmore of wrestling. Because it's going to be Maxwell Jacob Friedman. Yeah. I don't think he's got a hole in his game, genuinely. Brilliant on the stick. Mm -hmm. And he is phenomenal in the ring as well. And just look, there's so many potential storylines breaking out for him right now. Obviously, he's working with Darby Allen. You've got potential feuds down the line with Wardlow. Clearly, he's not really enjoying everything as much as he used to. And the Hangman Page storyline, if he wins the world title, it's right yeah. there for me. Another one, Daniel Garcia, I think, legitimately has Brian Danielson levels of potential. And can we put, like, 2.0 just, just with him? That's his like, father's, yeah, of course. Just, like, maybe over yeah. his shoulder on Matt Rushmore or go. something. Uh, right, let's move on to today's final question. I love this question, Kristen. Uh, Kristen says, which, what culture staff member would you like to see Rock 2011 Tyson Kid Bangs. You know the haircut oh, I'm talking about, my Andy Murray. Goodness gracious me. Well, I would be physically impossible. I could not do Imagine that. you just got a hair transplant uh, just there. Yeah. The line. <laughs> just a little patch like the Ronaldo World Cup 98 little gimmick. Um, oh my goodness. Well, I don't do we have anyone that's balding from the back that we could throw under I mean, the if bus? If we admit it, all of us probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um Adam Nicholas would probably still look fit. He'd, yeah, he would somehow it, make that work, it, wouldn't yeah, he? Yeah, he would figure it out. But I, I think Michael Hanfield would look really funny. <laughs> it was um, big square. Yeah, someone Photoshop, please, the Tyson Kid head onto Walter's face with the, the hair. <laughs> See what that looks like. I genuinely think, like you say with Nicholas, I think, I know Gareth shaved it all off, but I think Gareth could pull this off. You well, he, he would he would look exactly like Tyson Kidd if he did it. Fair enough. <laughs> but let us know and give us your photo shops on Twitter at WhatCultureWW. And fun to finish up today uh, with just a massive shout out to Tyler Hatfield, who made a sign for AEW. There's obviously all the whole host of uh, the brilliant Simon Mills. And it was like on screen within about 10 seconds yeah. of Dynamite last night. <laughs> Every week. But shout out to Tyler, who uh, wasn't on camera, but took signs. Yeah, you know, one nice one saying the home of professional wrestling for AEW, but also one that says Grey Final Mills, <laughs> which if anyone listens to the podcast will know is something that the Dadly Boys say very often, particularly in relation to AEW. But thanks to anyone who takes signs, it's ridiculous. We were saying earlier in the yeah, office so to see them at shows. It's a monster, isn't it? It's like awesome. Simon Miller it's gives awesome. this an up, touch grass, all that sort of thing. Yeah. Preposterous. Happy birthday, there Michael was the, situation. There's <laughs> any, any wrestling show signs, there was the bloody Pachiti sign yeah. in Crown Jewel. I love seeing them, so thank you to anyone who's done that. But in particular, once again, a massive thank you to Tyler Had field for that one uh, let us know your thoughts on that and all of today's news stories in the comment section below don't forget to like share and subscribe and subscribe to what culture wrestling on either itunes spotify wherever you get your podcast from for daily wrestling podcasts myself and the dadly boys not only reviewing aw dynamite but finally getting around to reviewing halloween havoc later on today as well plus you can let us know your thoughts and twitter questions on twitter at what culture wwe actually there follow both of us you can follow andy murray at, at andy h murray the h stands for horrible which is what all scottish football referees are <laughs> <laughs> he said he was going to do this in the pub and I forgot. It's true. It's true. I thought he was going to stand for a different age, but we don't want to get into problems with Rangers fans. Today. Oh, absolutely not. I don't poke the, the bears. <laughs> Follow me <laughs> on Twitter at Adam Wilmore. Follow us all at What Culture WWE. But for now, my thanks to Andy Murray. Thank you for joining us. And we will see you soon. Rangers. <laughs>